This meeting was held in exciting Las Vegas, Nevada from July 9th through the 11th, 1999. This is videotape number 25, SET Technology. The world that uh, used to work for the evil Gatesian warriors, now, he's gotten through the 12-step program, he's back with us. And other goodies. So with that, dead attic. Thank you. I'm dead addict. Uh, thank you all for coming, etc. Uh, I'm going to talk about currency systems, the history of currency systems, the fraud, is fraud issues is associated with uh, currency up to uh, e-commerce where we are now, um, and touch on some other payment uh, systems, talk about the set protocol, um, where it's at, um, where it's going, and talk a little bit about the, uh, the pieces involved with the set and uh, uh, how the message flow works, etc. Um, because I don't have uh, slides ready, you won't see, there's pretty much no way to, to properly illustrate a message flow or understand it without uh, seeing diagrams. It's, it's quite complex, but uh, once you're familiar with it, it, it makes sense. It's somewhat straightforward. Um, although that is the typical complaint, uh, or initially was when SET came out, people are like, oh my goodness, this is complicated. Well, it's a protocol. Protocols tend to be somewhat complicated. Once you have them implemented, then you just use them, right? No one on the internet is, is concerned about the complexity of TCP IP when their dad's using a, a web browser. That's how SET should be, if properly implemented. Um, so, the specification overall is very good. It's a good spec. Uh, I haven't heard any serious critiques on the spec. Um, and that's good. Uh, without a good specification, you're doomed. There's no way to win. You, it's game's over. Um, and with a good implement or a good specification, uh, there's a chance of getting constantly improving um, products that have a chance at security and could be secure. Um, I, I think most of the set implementations are, are pretty reasonable, but I'm sure once they get deployed uh, in, in a mainstream fashion, everyone's using it. Um, people such as yourselves will really attack it, and we'll find issues in it then. But because there's, the specification is, is quite reasonable and it's a good spec, the implementation can be improved. So that's a good thing. Um, security is obviously important to the banking industry. Um, they care a lot about money for some reason. So uh, the, the current solutions that were out there weren't solutions, and they saw um, very large risks for themselves. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, um, the crypto. The crypto issues in a security implement implementation, uh, your key creation, your random seeds, etc. Uh, Bruce Schneier can, can talk about the importance of a, uh, a good crypto implementation better than I can, and I suggest you visit his website and read what he has to say about the importance and pitfalls of crypto implementations. But the uh, uh, crypto that, that uh, set uses is pretty straightforward public key stuff um, does um, it, it deals it wrappers crypto a lot in, in different layers uh, and, and sets designed so if there's any major flaws in any of the cryptographic algorithms used in set they will be uh, uh, replaced so the the uh, cryptographic methods aren't fixed in the protocol. They're what they're using now. Uh, granted, there would probably be some real interoperability issues and a tough transition period in moving away from one crypto algorithm to another, but the uh, specification does, does hold for that and does allow that. Um, one problem that, that set vendors do not have is export issues for the most part. They still have to uh, go through the red tape and they still have to communicate with the government agencies and, and do all that sort of thing. But for the most part, the uh, US federal government has said that banking is very important and that banks of all people should be getting this drone crypto. I guess the government trusts banks. Um, <laughs> Yeah, hey, I say I, I used to work for the man. Yeah, I thought writing operating system software was working for the man. Um, now I'm working for a very small, lovely company, not a 20,000 person company, but we're working for 
multinational banking industry, which makes the previous man, you know, Bill wishes he could be that for the most part. Um, banks, deal, banks deal with risk management. That's, that's what they do. That's how they decide how to, how to move their money around. So uh, currently, the, the current e-commerce implementations are not to their liking uh, from a risk, risk management perspective. But they're concerned with more than outside attacks. Uh, ideally, in a proper implementation of SET, any given piece uh, should be able to be, any given rule should be able to be compromised. Your system administrator that's administrating the machine where the software is running should be completely compromised and there's no danger to the financial information. As your DBA, as your network administrator, you should be able to sniff any link. You should be able to be in the, uh, uh, in the middle and attempt man in the middle of connections, which isn't really a rule. A rule violation per se, but any you should be able to be anywhere in the system with more or less any amount of access and not have a compromised uh, set solution, um, because most most uh, security issues are related to people within within the corp within the corporations. For the initially, when set is implemented, there will be uh, intimately familiar with set software, other people implementing it, and the people. Uh, running it and the absent of people that, that um, the audience will have an opportunity to really so specifically the, the, gateways, the four pieces of uh, a set transaction. And only set was uh, it is only for credit cards. It was designed by card associations. It's not a generalized e-commerce solutions. It's a credit card solution only. That's what the uh, uh, credit card associations care about. It. They are the ones that developed the spec. Um, privacy. No one in the industry cares about privacy. Uh, individuals within corporations care about privacy, but as corporate entities. Virtually no software companies at all care about it. I, I think the, the few um, exceptions to that rule would be in perception management. Uh, Microsoft recently uh, announced, and I'm very happy they did, that um, they wouldn't allow advertisement that um, violated their, their privacy statements. On the other hand, they, they sell sophisticated data mining software and they, they uh, do sophisticated analysis on their logs. So they don't really care about privacy, and no one does. And the banking industry is more so that way. Furthermore, financial inf information is valuable. Um, it builds demographics. It's extremely valuable. Um, this is not an anonymous e-commerce solution. There are e-commerce solutions out there for uh, cash and money transfers that are anonymous. They haven't done very well, unfortunately. Uh, and I'll talk about uh, that some more in a, in a minute here. <clears throat> so I, I kind of like to talk a little bit about fraud as it applies to, to um, through the ages slightly. So we started out with gold, more or less, or, or some substance that was real. Um, and for the most part, the only way you could commit fraud was to shave it off, hollow it out, uh, attempt to um, dilute it with another metal. And, and for each of these things, um, there's been ways to, to counter the fraud. Um, you can do volume tests on the metal, etc. Uh, when we went to paper currency, the problem of fraud increased um, dramatically. And uh, counterfeiting is, is actually a very large problem in the world, uh, specifically with U.S. currencies outside of the United States, hence our new $100 bills. Uh, to explain, I, I was, I was going to explain how our currency system works and how money exists. You know, with gold, it's pretty straightforward. You go find some gold, you have gold, you trade it for goods. But with banks involved, you have a situation where they're giving out more money than they have, so they're creating money. Um, and there, there's a, a reasonably good explanation of, of how, a, uh, how the financial system works in regards to money distribution on uh, egold.com. Uh, I, I found every time I attempt to fully understand, let alone recommunicate how our currency systems work, it makes you sound like a complete nut. Um, and if you've listened at any length uh, to economists, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
Yeah, so the, the credit system, many, many people, um, the card associations care about their brands, much like other, other businesses do. So people think, I have, I have a Visa card in my wallet. No, you have a card that was issued by a bank. That's not a Visa card. Visa is associated with that bank and an association. The bank ha has rules they have to play with to stay in that association, uh, as does the merchant that accepts that credit card. For instance, uh, there's charges associated with, with all of this, and your merchant, one of the rules in the states is, as a rule, they're not allowed to charge you less for non-credit card transactions, because that makes it really clear to the consumer that this is costing them money. Well, so what ends up happening is everyone with cash subsidizes those, those credit charges that the merchant has to, has to use. There's, there's a couple different types of credit card transactions, and these are very important for risk analysis. Face-to-face um, -face is uh, considered the most secure, and uh, you hand someone a credit card, and they may go off for a while, but the fraud rate is, is relatively low in a face-to-face -face transaction. So the, car, the, the card associations, the other banks, they have formulas. They say, we've gotten this many chargebacks, this many uh, um, credit card denials, and so this is what we're going to charge you for this type of transaction. Merchants get charged less for face-to-face -face transactions than they do for what we call MOTO, or mail order telephone uh, um, transactions. They get charged a lot more for that. Um, some of you in the room are, are actually responsible for that. It's, <laughs> it's very easy to commit fraud over the telephone, and, and the card associations are, are obviously very interested in minimizing that fraud, but it'll always be much easier if you're a disembodied voice on the other end. With face-to-face -face transactions, the card associations, if they cared, could get more strict in the protocol they require. For instance, if you hand someone a credit card and the card association requires that the ID is checked and you are committing fraud, the merchant most likely is going to eat that charge. And that's why those rules are in place. Um, there, are, there are some instances where the, car, the, the bank will eat the costs. Uh, and this all, this all costs money. Um, if, if I buy something and I say, well, I didn't buy that, uh, and dispute the claim, that costs money. That costs the merchant money. Um, even attempting to run an authorization, you know, you, you have a credit card that uh, expires its limit, your limit is expired, you run the credit card, credit card fails, that just costs the merchant some money. So even people attempting to commit fraud with, say, generated credit cards with correct check sums or, or whatever they're doing, attempting to use fraud, even if it's caught, ends up costing the merchant money. And in the case of the internet, those, those numbers are rising very dramatically. So the most, the most uh, often heard question I hear concerning SET is, so that's dead, right? That hasn't gone anywhere, right? There, you know, two and a half years ago or, or so, everyone was extremely interested. There was a lot of buzz and hype. Um, the card associations moved remarkably fast to, to create the specification or to empower the, the correct bodies to create the specification. For bank time, um, they moved very fast. It hasn't gone anywhere. So, so why is that so? One, one problem is there, there's four pieces in a, a set system, a card, a card holder or a wallet, uh, a pause, point of sales, uh, a gateway, which connects to the legacy uh, um, uh, financial networks for credit card authorization, and a certificate of authority that validates everyone. Well, if you as a client or a consumer has a set wallet, you need a set enabled merchant. And that set enabled merchant <coughs> That set enabled merchant then needs a gateway to connect to the legacy networks, and that that chicken and egg problem has has prevented deployment to some degree. Um, there's also the issue of Y2K. Banks are uh, wanting to make sure that they're good with that and don't want to introduce new software that they'll have to 2K compliance tests. Um, they're they're very where they're at as far as Y2K now, and they want to devote their energies and their budgets to that. So I think after, uh, after the year's over, we'll see more set implementations. 
In the United States, there's, there's no reason for anyone to use SET from a consumer standpoint. This isn't the case elsewhere. In fact, SET isn't completely dead in Europe or Asia. Uh, the consumer has no risk associated. They, they, for the most part, don't care about their credit card uh, security at all. They know if their card's lost or stolen, they can make a phone call. They don't have to worry about anything. The worst that will happen to them is a $50 charge. That's very nice. They, that $50 limit means no one has any, anything to worry about here. In Europe, that's not the case. And I don't believe that's the case in Asia either. If you lose your credit card, you're liable. You're potentially liable for the entire uh, credit limit that you have with that institution. So if you have a $5,000 credit card and lose that, um, you might be in trouble. And this, this is uh, perhaps some of the reason why e-commerce hasn't um, taken off so wildly in Europe as it has in the US, is people in Europe are aware of the risk associated with credit card uh, uh, usage. And for the most part, the internet's not secure. And they could lose their data. They could lose their money, rather. Last year was, was the first year, uh, for the most part, the Christmas season last year was the first year e-commerce uh, had significant dollars behind it. There was enough, uh, enough traffic flowing in cash for people to realize this was suddenly real and was not a fluke of one or two successful uh, merchants on the internet. Um, so as, as the e-commerce use goes up, the fraud rates are also increasing and the card associations are, are looking at those. But until last year, everyone was as far as major corporations were more or less um, getting an internet presence and developing a commerce presence just to have it so they wouldn't be beaten by the other guys. Now that there's real money going through there, there's a lot more incentive to have secure systems. <clears throat> so that, that's why SET hasn't taken off. Um, why it might take off? Massive fraud, obviously. Um, that's costing the merchants, it's costing the banks, um, and if there's large visibility issues, the card associations um, might realize people aren't comfortable with spending money, which means they make less money, so that's no good. Our current e-commerce solutions is for the most part SSL. You go to any site, you say about security, and they're talking about SSL. and. SSL is fine. I like SSL. Nothing wrong with it. it. It is a secure connection. It is a secure link for the most part. Um, so that's great. The problem is, though, from a bad guy's perspective, they could watch my link, try to find out when I'm purchasing somewhere. Um, you know, and if I purchase once or twice a month, they'll have to wait one month or two weeks to find a single transaction, um, and then they'd have to. They'd have to, you know, they'd have to break the uh, SSL if they they want my credit card number. But for the most part, I I I don't have a lot of hesitation in, in sending my credit card uh, non-SSL through the internet. The only reason why that bothers me at all is because the people that have that have the systems without SSL, and I've seen merchants without SSL on their credit card entering information, are the same people are going to have really bad backends. And as a hacker, the thing to do, if you want to get lots of cash, or as a, uh, as a uh, criminal and a thief with computer abilities, if you want to get 30,000 credit cards, you don't get them one at a time. You go to the merchant, you hack into the merchant system, you go to his database, you hack his database, and you have 20 or 30,000 uh, credit cards. I, I wouldn't suggest anyone in the audience do this. Um, hackers have a tendency to uh, uh, sell those credit cards to the FBI. So I <laughs> don't recommend that either. There's, there's no alternative to SET right now. SSL, uh, SSL is there, and, and it's a good piece, but it's not an end-to-end -end solution. Uh, very often, those credit cards are sitting on the, the merchant side in plain text in some database somewhere. They're very vulnerable. Uh, and, and there have been instances where Companies have been hacked and their databases have been pulled. This is this is happening. Um, doesn't instill confidence in the consumer. This is this is for certain. One important thing about SET is interoperability. 
all of this stuff has to work together perfectly. There's four components and they all have to talk to each other well and they have to work all the time. If uh, uh, IBM is making uh, uh, one piece of software and Compaq is distributing another piece of software and Microsoft is distributing a wallet and they don't all talk together, the consumer really doesn't care whose fault it is. He might blame the wallet because that's what he sees as an interface, but his impression of set will be bad and set won't work if there's not full enough building. So the very soft where vendors communicate with themselves um, very closely and do things like interoperability fairs where they uh, test against permutations of each other's software to ensure interoperability. Um, this is kind of interesting because bu while bugs are discovered, everyone's competing with each other. So as a rule, you don't want to announce your bugs to your competitors, but there's no other way to, uh, to ensure interoperability other than testing against each other. Anyone uh, familiar with SAIC? Um, so there was a SAIC um, division or team that branched out into a separate company called CertCo. CertCo has uh, is kind of important in the set wall world. It has a few different rules. Um, they developed the specification, which uh, is in ASN 1.1, I do believe. Here's a formal definition here. It's not light reading, not light reading at all. Um, and so they developed a specification uh, working with the uh, card associations and the various players to, to see what's necessary to replicate the functionality of existing credit card systems. SET does that pretty well. Um, the credit card models, the authorizations, the, the captures, the batch captures, all of this stuff which if any of you are familiar with credit card processing exists in the credit card world um, directly applies to uh, the SET world which probably makes the the gateway implementation a little bit easier. Um, so CertCo also has the root certificate of all the CAs. So they issue other CA certificates and they're, they're the top of the chain. Um, I'm not sure if that's quite the case. I know there's been a little bit of fragmentation on that end. That was the ideal to begin with. Um, it might happen that, um, that there are, will end up being multiple uh, uh, root certificates. They also give out set marks, and that's just uh, um, a certification saying you've passed our battery of tests that um, achieve a baseline or, or the reasonable amount of, of set functionality and it all works good or perfectly. Um, set mark is, is, is useful because it's some bar. Um, it's, it's not a perfect battery of tests, but it's certainly better than nothing. Um, so there's the players. There's the certificate authority, the wallet, the pause, and the gateway. The certificate authority distributes certificates to all the parties. Um, how the wallet user gets his certificate will probably be distributed by the bank, and the bank will uh, allow them to get their certificate. The pause, um, um, or I'm sorry, the issuing bank. There, there's a couple of different terms in relation to the banking parties involved here. The issuing bank is who gives you your credit card. The acquiring bank is the merchant's bank that takes money from your credit card. So your issuing bank will issue you certificates. Um, the acquiring bank will issue the pause certificates and the uh, acquiring bank will also probably be running the gateway into their legacy networks. And as a rule, um, if the pause is not uh, using hardware cryptography, the, the uh, gateway to the legacy networks definitely is. That's probably the most vulnerable piece of the set equation is the gateway because all of the credit cards from various merchants are going through this one point and they do have to um, leave the set protocol so they're not encrypted anymore and make it onto the gateway network. Uh, fortunately for people that are implementing this, the, the gateway is normally in a banking secure environment and um, people who implement banking systems at op centers uh, as a rule um, do reasonably good jobs and are uh, very thorough in their security audits and their, their physical security and all of this sort of thing. So when you make a transaction in SET, what it looks like is you're shopping a merchant, you say, yes, I want to pay. The merchant then sends a MIME type 
it's a set mime type packet with what's called a uh, uh, wake up message. And the wallet receives the wake up message, and or the browser receives the wake up message, kicks off the wallet. So that's associated with the wallet application. Um, and the wallet could be a local, locally based wallet or a, a server based wallet that's located at a bank. The advantage of a server bank, server based wallet, is that. Your keys are stored remotely in an environment that's more secure than, than my mom or uh, your mother's computer is. Uh, and also you can, you can roam around on various computers. So if you have a wallet that's local to your PC, you can't purchase from someone else's PC. So a server wallet's kind of nice in that respect. Um, so you, the wake up message is received from the, the wallet application is launched. Um, you type in your password, uh, and a message is sent back to the merchant saying, yes, I, I agree, this is fine. The merchant sends a message to the gateway uh, that includes your message, and that says, well, um, is, is this credit card valid? So the, the gateway then determines whether your credit card is valid or not, sends a mention message back to the merchant, the merchant then sends a message back to you saying, yeah, the gateway said it was fine, um, so I think it's fine, so the purchase is complete, and that's over. One nice thing is the, and I'm not going to go into high-level detail of the, the crypto layering and the, the message layering right now, the books do a reasonably um, good job of explaining it. Um, and uh, the, these books, by the way, are loca located on Certco's site. So certco.org has, uh, in PDF form, free all of the specifications. Um, somewhat of a dry read. Um, the CA doesn't revoke user certs. Generally, the, the certificates authorities, they issue certs and they revoke certs. They don't, they don't revoke user certs at all. Um, this is kind of a minor point, but that's because of uh, certificate revocation lists for 20 or 40 million card holders would get um, unreasonable and the network traffic would it'd, it'd be obscene. So what happens is the, uh, the certificates that the CA issues are only um, revocable for the gateway and the pause. So as a card holder, you will know that that pause doesn't work and it, just, it won't work if the certificate's been revoked. Um, So there's some, one of the things that excites me is a possibility about SET. I, I like SET because it's more or less secure. Um, it's better than SSL, which kind of offends me um, in so much that, that vendors pretend that this is their security and this is real security. Um, if they wanted to talk about, about security, they should show me their network topology and where everything's sitting and be happy enough uh, to know that even if I know all this, I still can't get them because their employees will most likely mess with them, um, not outside, in, outside intruders. So about security, SSL, doesn't make me happy. What I would like to see is payment gateways. I, I've seen some, uh, um, there's Millicash, um, eCash, there's eGold, there's some uh, commerce solutions that are designed to uh, allow anonymity. And it's entirely possible that you could go to a site and buy with, say, SET, $50 worth of credit in another payment type and then use that payment type elsewhere. Um, I, think, I think this would be very interesting. Um, and it, also very interesting is um, it, it's possible and feasible to implement your own currency systems if you can get enough people to go along with it. Uh, eGold is, is sort of an interesting example of that, although it's a gold-based currency system, uh, not, uh, not one they completely made up. Let me see. Do you have any questions? Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That's a good question. Did you cash be bankrupt? And one thing that they had was online tax. And the question was, do you know who got it? And then you license the tax online. 
I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I, I, I was looking at DigiCash, and it's, it's once again one of those chicken egg problems where you need all the merchants or a, uh, a significant base of merchants to, uh, to increase the, the, the usage, and there just weren't enough, there weren't enough merchants. Um, um, yeah. I don't think the banks are, are uh, very excited about micropayments. Um, I, I don't see them moving to implement them soon. Um, I think it's entirely entirely possible that one could implement uh, micropayment systems. Obviously, they have been implemented. Uh, I like them a lot myself. Um, the, the the charges that credit card companies charge right now are are exorbitant and outrageous in my mind. Um, they're they're banking, so so to speak. You talked a lot about the domestic, uh, national set and everything, but a lot of e-commerce is starting to go overseas and in different countries have different regulations on what kind of crypto that you can use. I mean, obviously we treat our SSL or encryption as munitions in the United States, so certain is not allowed to... And, and for, for most encryption, that, that's generally true. Banking encryption is more or less the exception of that. Everyone realizes if there's one weak link in the chain and it's this country, um, that just won't work. I, f f it's my understanding that, that SET is only not allowed from our perspective, and it does have strong crypto, that SET is not allowed into um, Iraq and uh, two or three other uh, um, countries. Um, for, but for the most part, it's, it's a it's allowed to be exported everywhere in the world. And furthermore, Europe and Asia are actually implementing SET um, a lot more than, than we are. There's been some pilots in the US, but the pilots in Europe and the usage in Europe is, is vastly higher than, than, uh, than that. There's a uh, site called SET-Sites, I think it's dot, dot .com or dot .org, that lists all the merchants that are available. And 80% of those are European. I'd say 15% of those are Asian. And I think there's one US merchant at the moment that's using SET. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, my card is over there, and I, of course, didn't back up my certificate. How do they reissue those? Oh, so, so you, uh, you, you lost your certificate is your scenario, right? My laptop gets stolen or whatever. So if, if, your laptop, if your laptop gets stolen or you lose control of your key material, what the proper thing to do then is act as if it was a physical device that you just lost, that your, it was your card that you just lost. Um, and then if once your credit card's revoked, uh, it doesn't matter if the certificate's still valid because the transaction will be denied. Yeah? I wonder what the difference for, from a hacker's perspective of getting into the back-end database of uh, going through and using an SSL connection getting in versus when you go to a point of sale uh, you know, you're using your credit card, they take the same imprint and put it into their computer system again. And you know, a lot of times it's back-end systems are the same back-end systems. So, you know, there's this big juicy database back there, whether you go through the internet or you go through a cash uh, or terminal. Yeah, you're, you're probably right, and I, I haven't seen a lot of large commercial institutions' uh, uh, topologies and, and exact implementation details. I would imagine, though, that on the internet and their e-commerce point of presence, there's uh, more or less a gateway to their back-end system there, and it would probably be a lot more um, non-trivial to gain access to that, that back-end system that you're referring to, but uh, it'd be, I would imagine, quite simple to uh, um, get that link in between the two and grab everything that's on the internet. Um, I'm not certain how, how secure uh, um, these people are, these, these merchants are. It's obvious though with the bugs in site server, for instance, that just came out. Um, I was <laughs> um, 
the, the merchant uh, software bugs that ha have been uh, um, uh, exposed and shown. I mean, in my mind, these problems should have been discovered by uh, security audits by these companies that are implementing them. Um, there are mom and pop shops on the internet, but there's also multi-billion dollar corporations running some of the software. And without a security audit, um, trusting Microsoft to be secure is never a good idea, um, let alone any other software vendor. Yeah. You mentioned the, the consumer, the bank, will likely issue the cert that's associated with your wallet. Uh, if I have five banks, couldn't I just go to Verisign and get one cert that would work all over? Um, the, the certificate authority chain is different from um, the SSL cert chain. So the, the certificates involved are X, X509 certificates, but there are set extensions to them. So I'm, I'm not sure if they're strictly speaking X509, but that, that's what they're based off. But there are, there are set ex extensions to that. Oh, uh, one interesting point. Um, one of the beauties about the, the set protocol, the thing that excited me most about it, is my merchant never sees my credit card info ever. They never have my number um, as, as set was, was developed. So there's no, no chance of fraud on the merchant side. They just get the clearance from the gateway, and then they get their cash from the gateway, but they never see my credit card number. Uh, that's also important from the standpoint, from the bank's point of view, in a fraud issue. Banks are more concerned about merchant fraud than they are about consumer yes. fraud. Yes, 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 they are. Yep, non-repudiation non is very important to them. Um, anyone else? All right, good. Uh, set off ready protection against uh, fraud involved in buying things that are purely. Uh, 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 that, that, that's an interesting question. So the, the question was to set uh, offer any specific protection against uh, fraud in uh, electronic uh, items or non-tangible items. That that the non-repudiation factor that you signed your key and you or you signed the. Uh, uh, the, the transaction, they view that as a face-to-face -face transaction. Suddenly, uh, the internet's much higher than mail order telephone fraud, but they consider a face-to-face -face transaction. And right now, most, uh, a lot of fraud, or most of it, is concerning things like pornography. Um, you know, I, I've known people working at credit card call centers, and the husband that denied ever visiting the, the porn site was a very common call to him. Explain a little bit more about what exactly happens. I guess there's more than just typing in your credit card and saying, okay. The only time you um, type in your credit card number is when you initially uh, are getting your certificate. So after that, your credit card information is uh, wrapped in crypto layers. Okay, so you're typing in a password of some kind. Um, y yes, yes. As, as, you, uh, as you enter your information in your wallet, your credit card number, you also have a password that's associated with that certificate. Presumably there's some chance of that being grabbed off your system. That could be grabbed off your system, um, the, the certificate uh, on your local machine is that you're talking about? I guess if somebody was running a piece of uh, program on it, going through your telephone memory or something. Yep. Yep, exactly. Um, and there's very little to do about that. Um, and that, that's outside the set, set specification, but certainly uh, one attack against set would be to have a Trojan that hits client machines and hits the communication between them and their wallet and, and watches that. So yeah, that, that's a pretty reasonable attack against it. Uh, so I just want to make sure, as I understand it, every bank now that issues a credit card has to be as a surrogate for doing business as well. Um, th not necessarily. They can firm that out. They can they can give that to uh, um, they can abdicate that responsibility or give that to a, a third party uh, certificate authority if they want. That's uh, as it has been the, the general model how it's been deployed in pilots. Uh, I think when we're dealing with twenty and thirty million certificates, they might uh, um, farm it out to someone else. I, I, I think they they like being in control of it though, uh, as a bank because the the. The, the process of issuing a certificate has some business rules at the back end, so your bank can, say, send you a, a letter, and this is called all out-of-band stuff of the protocol, but they would send you a letter and saying, here's your activation code to activate your wallet, um, log into this site, so you go into the site, enter your information, enter the activation code, then enter your uh, uh, credit card number and password. and 
and then it's checked against the uh, certificate authority because you're requesting a certificate. And if they're running the certificate authority, they can um, be talking to their backend databases to make sure that the information you just entered corresponds with their information. So if other parties are going to implement it, they'll probably have to uh, um, uh, have pipes in, into uh, um, the bank's backend systems to, to ex execute that business logic. And, and that 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 would be a banking the issuer bank's decision, and and yes, that would that would help mitigate fraud. And uh, I've I've heard uh, some of the business decisions go to various levels of physical authentication to to get that set up information. Yeah, um, and at that point, they see your credit card, they see you in person, you issue the cert, you're the only one that has a password. The non-repudiation thing is pretty much clenched at that point. Yeah. What do you think about the future of the X.509? Um, no opinions. <laughs> yeah, ask Bruce. Ask Bruce. <laughs> yeah. Are you aware of any plans to improve or upgrade any of these capabilities and stuff? Um, yeah, there, there are some plans. Um, Japan has some very, very bizarre payment options. Um, so there's extensions to set called uh, Japanese payment options um, that credit your account and they, they give you little kickback gifts and it's all very odd and, and confusing. It's a, very confusing how Japanese does it. There, there's uh, smart card extensions. Um, there's a set 2.0 that I don't think is very far um, through through the uh, committees and whatnot. Um, I think they're going to wait for set 1.0 to take off. But yeah, the, um, yeah, yeah. There, there's definitely more work on the protocol being done. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Setco.org is one. Um, and they have uh, a list of the various set vendors on that site. Uh, they also have the uh, set protocol and uh, more information about set. Um, there's a book about set um, uh, at Amazon, and I don't recall the name of that, but I believe the author's last name is Grady. So, um, Grady, G R A D Y, I believe. Um, set sites. I'm not sure if there's a dash in between the two. It might be set dash sites or set sites dot com or org. So there's four possibilities. All right. Um, has a list of all all merchants um, that they found on the internet using set, which is probably a couple hundred at this point, uh, and the issuing banks and uh, whatnot. The other people involved with set. Um, that's all I can think of offhand. Oh. Um, Searching for articles on set uh, from American Banker on the American Banker site uh, is pretty interesting too. You can get the banking industry's assessment and analysis of, of set. Yeah. Also, the entire set specification is available over the net. I forget exactly where I got it about a year and a half ago. Yeah, it's on uh, it's on Certco. Yep. The these all of these are in PDF form uh, at Certco.org. So yeah, I. Uh, very fun reading. And I think I'm about out of time. I guess I can take maybe one or two more questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know about anonymous credit cards since they're issued by banks. Try eGold.com. I'm not sure how, how well they're doing, but the, that's uh, something very interesting. eGold.com also has a description of, of currency systems um, that's very, very good reading. Last question. There, there's a lot of uh, legacy uh, uh, financial networks, um, and uh, I, I do work at a financial infrastructures company, but I'm, I'm not familiar with, with any of those. No. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thanks very much.